Okay, this time, this segment, what I wanna show you is kind of how to manage your clay a little bit. And so you're gonna to have to figure out what works for you at your space at home. Um, I like using the canvas when I work with the clay. It makes the cleanup a little easier. Um, you can also work on a board, but the thing with the board and the canvas is they do tend to slide around a little bit if you're wedging or pushing. But so you figure out what works for you. I'll have both of them out. Um, but I want to talk to you about some clay management stuff. So your bag should always be closed. I find that those metal things are sometimes hard to do. If you are simply leaving your bag closed and upside down like that, it should be fine. Um, you just don't want any air in there or much air in there, and you don't want to leave it open, obviously. You'll ruin your entire block of clay. Um, here's what I'm going to suggest. If at any time your clay feels like it's really hard, and getting too dry, you there is a good way to um, kind of get some moisture back in. And what I would do is I would just take the rolling pin stick I gave you. You can poke a few holes. Mine's pretty soft, um, but if you feel like yours isn't quite too so soft enough, poke a few holes in it. All right. Um, I'm not going all the way down. Just a few holes. And then if you put a little water inside there, so I would just fill basically fill those holes up and i'm not going to fill all of them up because mine's actually quite wet right now but you would fill your holes up and then you would just um you'd wrap it back up and in the next day or so those that water will be absorbed and if it's not you could dump it out but what that does is it rehydrates your clay kind of from the inside out and i found that's a really great way um the other thing you can do if your clay is feeling dry is you can always spray it so you can just give it a couple of squirts like that but that really only gets the outside. So the holes are a great way to rehydrate from the inside out. So that's a good tip for if you feel like your clay is getting too dry out. Um, I'm gonna also show you how to recycle clay in this segment. And so I provided an extra bag for you and this bag will be what I would call your recycle bag. So you'll always have a recycle bag, you'll have your good clay and you'll have a bucket and your bucket is gonna be accumulating slip. So as I wash my hands and tools in there, um, slip is going to start to accumulate at the bottom. We can either keep that slip and add it to our slip container or um, I'll show you how to kind of siphon off the water um, in a different segment and we can deal with that, uh, the slip at the bottom. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut a piece of this clay off and I just want to give you some tips. That was our handmade wire cutter, right? Um, I want to give you some tips on clay management, and I think I'll show you um, some tips for wedging at home as well, um, since we're going to need to do that at the beginning. So notice every time I use my clay, I'm going to close it up. If I have water in there, don't dump it upside down, right? You might actually have to use your metal, your metal thing. Um, otherwise, I can put that back in my bag if I don't have a lot of space or whatever. Um, okay, so wedging at home. I do suggest you try to use your canvas. One tip I do is I just hang the canvas over the edge of the table a little and then lean against it, right? If you do that, what happens is you kind of hold the canvas in place so it doesn't keep moving on you. Um, so it's just one little way of doing it, but you're gonna have to figure out what works for you. It's not gonna be as easy as the classroom. Um, things just aren't gonna be as easy as home, but you can still wedge and remember you're pushing down and away, little shoves down and away, and then you roll it. Um, so please wedge your clay at home. Every little step of the process still matters and counts and could affect the end result blowing up or whatever. If that's not working for you, you certainly can try to wedge on your board same thing it slides though right if you're doing it right so um that would work if you were working against a wall or something or else just uh also you could try wedging right on your table if you have a table that's sturdy so you don't want to break a table doing this and you could if you had like a folding table or something weaker you could actually probably break the table so it takes that much force to wedge if uh, all else fails just do it on the ground that's what i do a lot of times just go on the ground and then put a piece of canvas down and you can do that so you're not picking up all the gravel or dirt or whatever's on the ground. So that's your wedging. Um, but what I wanted to show you was the clay management piece, which is what do I do with my clay after I'm done using it and it's dried out and things like that. Um, for, to start with, something you should consider and think about is, um, let's say um, you're rolling out slabs and we said this isn't the most ideal rolling pin, but it's going to work for us. 
and we have even the guide sticks that you could lay down. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind, you guys, is as you work and you produce scraps, you want to try to deal with them right away. So let's say I cut um, a circle out for some project I'm going to create. Maybe I'm making a mug and this is the base of my mug. And I would have spent more time rolling it nice and even and all that. But what I'm talking about is this extra clay right here, don't just leave it out. Put it back into your good bag while you're working with whatever else you're doing. When you leave clay out, it will dry out. And in class, I think you had the liberty of not having to worry about that because someone was going to recycle it later for you, me or my TAs. Um, but now you're, you're doing this at home alone, and so you want to make sure you don't make more work for yourself than you have to. So you'd always put it away. I kept some out so I can show you how to recycle clay. It's pretty easy. Um, this will be the part one of it. And what I usually do is just break it down into small pieces, size of a golf ball or smaller. And this is dry, right? So if you're recycling, it means it's too dry to work with. You would dip it in water, and then you would put it in a bag, okay? This will become your recycle bag. You want to keep air out of it. You want to close it every night. And then in about mm, a week or so, we'll be accumulating enough scrap that we can re-wedge it up into a new um, good piece of clay. So this is just part one of recycling, breaking, dipping, bagging, making sure that you have all the air out and that this bag is closed in some way and it's separate from your good clay. And then um, part two, I'll show you how to re-wedge all that up. Okay, so I think that's enough for clay getting started, clay management, how to keep it wet, what to do when it's too dry, um, and then I'll be showing you later how to re-wedge, how to get slip out of the bottom of your, um, your bucket, and then we'll also be talking about maintaining projects.